Continuing our look now at the best in children's television. This morning, the new kid, or er, dinosaur on the block. So the big purple reptile that kids can't resist. The big purple dinosaur. <laughs> It teaches about love, and, and it just kind of like soothes the kids. And always, there's that signature song. And we're still teaching about love and soothing you. It's the Purple Tales podcast. I'm Nancy J. with the man who was Barney in the suit. 22 years, Carrie Stinson? 22 when, years. When you, what goes through your head when, when, when you really think about 22 years of your life in the suit? Um, God, just so many good memories. So many good memories. Um, you know, singing and dancing across this country and seeing those kids and, and of course, all these wonderful people that have been here. You know, I mean, it's it's just the memories have been flowing as we've been doing this each week. Was there ever a time that you can remember that you thought, you know, maybe I should stop? No, absolutely not. And as you you know, I jumped back in not too long ago, <laughs> not even a, a hesitation. I still think I'm 22 and I absolutely, in my head at least. Uh, and he still acts like it sometimes. Some, possibly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so I just, That's I love cool. it. And that purple dinosaur gives me so much energy. So, well, I'll tell you what, I would suspect that these comments that we get from our fans yes. also gives you a lot of energy. They do. And, and I got one last night that just about put me to tears. It was such a beautiful story from Brian um, talking about the love that he had of his, his grandmother um, and Barney and the Barney magic. He hears us talk about the Barney magic, magic each week. And he lost his grandmother and was able to reconnect through Barney once again. And uh, it was just such a beautiful story. And he just wanted to share that with us. And I just love, um, he said, you know, I love hearing you guys and hearing how much you loved Barney, that it wasn't just a job as you guys say each week. And it, it means a lot to them and it means so much to me. It, I was calling people last night. I was, <laughs> I was telling everyone this wonderful story because it just touches my heart. Did he watch Barney with his grandmother? Was yeah, that he, part of yeah, it? Yeah, he was part of it was part of that. And he what happened is he went to the Universal. He lives in Orlando. Okay. And when he found the news, he just needed to get to Barney. And he and his girlfriend went to the show. And uh, after the show, they do a meet and greet. So he got to, to meet Barney. He said one word, he, he lost it. And Barney sat there and hugged him for 15 minutes. And, and they had that moment and Barney was there for him. Um, and the amazing story is he's become friends now with the cast down down there in Orlando. Well, and so, obviously that Barney probably understood all the things that you did through the years. Well, that's Karen. exactly it. I think if, if you're part of this, you understand the, the power you have and the importance you have and that, that once again, you're not an actor. You you become that character, and there's an importance to that. And uh, obviously, uh, down at Universal, they understand that. It's just it's such a beautiful thing. It made me feel so great that that's continuing. What else? You've got some oh, other yeah, comments, absolutely. right? Yeah, Michael W. I think we got a picture of Michael up here. So he was at he was at Radio City Music Hall. He wanted to show us this. Um, when you sell out a show at Radio City Music Hall, you get a glass etched poster, and there it is. Oh my God! And look, look, he has he has he has the tag on, so he's taking the tour. And what is that blue thing next to him? Uh, someone I, in, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> we're what not going to go there. Thing, I, I, I have know. no idea what anyway, that is. Anyway, he didn't he didn't edit it out. That's a real no. picture. It's so cute. And so Barney is there. There's the in official perpetuity. poster. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very very. Did you, did you know that? I didn't know that actually. I didn't know that. I thought that was so cool. So I love it. The the PTP fans keep sending us stories. Keep sending us pictures. We love seeing this. You know, I was thinking PTP, obviously that stands for Purple Tales Podcast, yes. but I was thinking maybe pretty terrific people. Uh, hey, all do you right. like that? Those could be our fans. I, I, I do like that. I mean, that. Yes. you know, Gaga has little monsters. I'll take pretty terrific people. And we do. They are. They are wonderful sending these. We get them all the time and we just love it. You know, it's funny because we've, we've talked to some of the kids. We've yes. talked to some of the writers and yes. the music and the dancers and the this and the yeah. actors and, yeah. and so on. But um, we did have one director come we in. We did. We did. We had old Brian. We did. And, and I've got a little clip okay. to kind of preview who we got today here. Okay. 
For our YouTube people, you'll have to check it out on YouTube. That's right. Otherwise, you can see a man directing a child. Yes, <laughs> on the set. <gasps> do you know what set that is? Do you I do. This was my set. This was Aww. this was the show I worked on. That's so okay. cute. Who? Uh, oh. Hey, <laughs> cute, cute, cute. Yes, and the man you hear laughing is Fred Holmes. Fred Holmes was one of our longest directors. He, we have a very close relationship. He, he worked me hard, but always put together such a great product. And I just loved working with Fred. And I am so glad he's here today. Uh, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate How did that. that feel watching that video? It's uh, it brings back a lot of wonderful memories. Yeah. Fred was really good with the kids and understanding and explaining and what was happening there is that the kids need to hit a, an exact spot because the light was set for it and if the kid missed it they were in the dark and so he would take them out on the set and actually show them and explain to them he was really good with the kids and that's really important because if he doesn't do that on rehearsal day then they're breaking takes and we're doing more takes when we've got hot lights and costumes and all yeah. of those things. So One of the things we always emphasize when we put the kids through Barney Camp is that, you know, you've got these uh, actors in these costumes out there that are going through a lot of, you know, it's very difficult to be in that costume for a long period of time. So we would try to get them to always make sure they knew their lines and make sure they knew their blocking because we didn't want them messing up because we didn't want them to have to be uh, having to put up with those costumes for any length of time so well first let's give a little background about fred absolutely i mean i googled you google him uh -oh. and uh -oh. look at his website uh -oh. what, what popped up? What popped up? well the things yeah. that we can talk about uh -oh. <laughs> you found my record did you? <laughs> 98 episodes of barney and friends you I directed did. 53 home videos yeah and also wrote a bunch so, yeah. but apparently you're like one of the only ones who directed and wrote the I'm same i'm the only one to have ever written and directed the same episode what was that uh i think it was called little red rocking hood do you remember I that remember one it. yeah that was fun I do. yeah we did it kind of like a like an opera and it yes. was sort of fun I do remember yeah, that. That was crazy. I yeah, Fred had all these great ideas, and and I, you know, he would come to us and hey, we want to try this and this and this and this, and you, you love that. You love that as an actor, being able to, to do new things and go new places. And Fred was really great about that. Well, it was easy because you know Carrie was up for anything, you know, and <laughs> I love this guy because you know it, you, I have been in the business for over forty something years, and I've worked with a lot of people. And the people you love to work with are the ones that they're like Carrie that have, they're willing to try anything. And he was, I mean, he'd roller skate, he'd jump in a giant pool full of water, <laughs> he'd do anything. So uh, it was a real honor to have worked with him. Well, it was the same for me. I mean, he, Fred, Fred would push us, but you knew why. So if it was the day and it was hot or it was the end and all that, but you knew what he was doing, you knew there was gonna be this great product and it was worth it. And so you could keep putting, he wasn't just doing it to make you tired. There was a reason what he was doing, a different camera shot, trying to, I remember some shots you did with a mirror one time. I, I love toys, I love, <laughs> love playing with the toys. Let's go back though, before Barney, before Carrie. Okay. You were, you were, you were a film director still. I mean, even then you oh. were directing and yeah, yeah, yeah. in the business. Yeah, I actually majored in film production at, uh, in school. And then when I got out of school, I uh, uh, was an editor in TV commercials and um i uh, did that for a little while and moved moved into directing from editing and just got tired of burned out on doing commercials and then started doing television documentaries and i traveled all over the world for several years doing documentaries all over the world and uh, in some places that you don't want to go <laughs> as, as my wife says the armpits of the world <laughs> and um we uh just you know almost crashed a few times in planes and a few other things happened that were not good so my wife said you know it was uh, time to come home and do something else for a living and so I came back and I was um, I, I did a bunch of early back in the I guess it would have been the probably the late 70s early 80s I was directing some uh, films for churches there were little dramatic films like 60 and 90 minute films for churches did a bunch of those and then uh, from that I uh, actually directed a feature film for Miramax that starred Lou Diamond Phillips and then I did and another one with that. Lou what called for Lionsgate. Yeah. yeah, I did another yeah. one called for Lionsgate with yep. Lou. And then a few years later, I directed a Bollywood film uh, in India, you know. So 
Yeah, so I was directing that, and then I was doing a lot of television in between. Uh, did Wishbone, and which was owned by the same company that owned Barney. So, um, and I, and I, at the same time, I was doing films for a bunch of other organizations. I got to work with a bunch of famous people. I worked with a lot. I'm a, I, if I could have done anything in my life, I would have been an astronaut because that was what I really <laughs> wanted to do. Uh, but I got to work with a lot of famous astronauts. I got to got to meet uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin with the 50th anniversaries going wow, on. Perfect, and, right. Yeah. And uh, I worked with Charlie Duke, who was, who was on Apollo 16. He lived on the moon for three days, and he was mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Got to know Sally Ride, and we stayed good friends, who was the first female astronaut. and. Um, Gordo Cooper who was a Mercury <laughs> 7 guy and so anyway, we got to do that and then also you know worked with Magic Johnson and Chris Everett and uh, uh, my goodness um, Cal Ripken a baseball player sure. and Joe Montana so a lot of different people doing all these different programs and one of my favorite things I did back in those days is I uh, worked with um, uh, Bob Ballard I don't know if you remember who he is Bob's the guy that found the Titanic and he's at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute just across from Martha's Vineyard. And so I got to interview and work with Bob and got to go down in the Alvin, oh. the little submersible. Oh, and wow. Yeah, so got That's to do neat. that and been to a couple of shuttle launches at Cape uh, Kennedy. And so and then a lot this, of fun stuff. This big purple dinosaur came into your life. <laughs> well, that was it's really weird, interesting how that happened because I, I was doing I was directing Wishbone. And as I said earlier, Wishbone was owned by the same company that did, that does Barney or yep. did Barney. And uh, Jim Riley called me up one day, and I'd known Jim for a lot of years. And, and he was he was the his. executive producer in those days. And he directed a lot. Jim was oh, yeah. a big part of Barney. Oh, so Barney was already he was like Jim was like from there from almost yes. the beginning. Yes. So Barney was already a big deal. Oh, it's a huge okay. deal. Yeah, okay. it started in '92, I believe, on television. I think it was. Yeah, yeah, it was been right there at '92. So it'd yes. been going for three years when I, because I he I was called in 95 and uh, he asked me if I would direct some shows for them and I, I, my son Michael had was too wow. old he kind of missed that generation so I hadn't seen Barney so he said well let me let me loan you some uh, videos and so I watched <laughs> them and I was just I was blown away because I, I I had been doing a lot of children's programming through the years and I uh, have a real heart for, for doing things for kids. And I just loved the message of it. I loved that they were doing these, they were teaching, you know, ethics and, and morals and how to have, and how to live in the world and be good people. And I just loved that message. So I said, sure, I'd love to do it. And 98 episodes later, <laughs> I was still going. <laughs> so let's talk about your first day then. Do you remember that coming onto the set and? Make you it know? up. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I remember it exactly. Well, had, you gone, had you gone to the set before? Oh, yeah, just yeah, to see. Yeah, they'd had me out to visit, and I, I think, as I recall, the very first thing I did for them was actually a home video, uh, and I think it was like counting. It was like okay. we we built this really cool set with numbers on the floor, and the kids had to do these counting exercises <laughs> and. Uh, as I recall, that's the first thing I did. It was, oh, there I am hanging out with Monty. Ah, yeah, there you yeah. are on the set. I love Monty. And, and we've great. got someone else we, we know at the oh, top there's there. there's Brian. There's yeah. Brian Mack. Oh, yeah. Brian love Brian. Yeah, he's Brian been a was great the guest. director, but he also AD'd yeah, for he was Fred. A oh, I mean, yeah, for you. A lot. They were a team, really well-known team. He, he talked we, a lot about you in his episode. Oh, he, yes. well, he was absolutely wonderful to work with. And, uh, and uh, when he got his opportunity huh. to direct, he was more than ready and prepared and was one of our great directors so oh that's cute yeah, yeah. so i mean when a director comes in a director kind of wants to do his own thing with, mm -hmm. with with a product i would think so was that i mean barney was already a success well i and there was an issue with that when i came on board <laughs> should i admit to this uh, i think you can okay, here okay. you can everything right. it's a safe world yes. it's a safe you world. Well, and it's, very, just, it's very it's funny you say that I'm, as you're saying that nancy they all had different styles like I would get my head ready for each director each week when I knew who was because they all had different styles and so I'm interested to hear this because yeah. he definitely had a very interesting the, yeah the week way he week I would direct Carrie would take that week off is I what, gotcha yeah okay mm, yeah. no there's a lot of stretching and a lot of more water <laughs> electrolytes well what what happened is that you know I came out of directing um, I'd done some multi camera stuff but I came out of directing single camera film style doing movies and TV shows. 
that were single camera style. And Barney was a typical three camera, actually used four, uh, multi-camera television show. And then as a director, my background was that the director runs the show. You control the set, you, do, you communicate with the actors, you tell the camera people what to do, you control the set. Well, when I came on Barney, they'd been doing it a little differently. They had a performance director who was this wonderful woman named Penny Wilson, who I absolutely M adore. Miss Penny, we, we obviously uh, talk about her a lot on, well, on PGD. She deserves people talking about her because yes. she was wonderful. But uh, the very first day I came on, I walked out on the set and I started talking to the actors. And I started telling people what to do. And <laughs> Penny walked over to me. And she kind of whispered very sweetly, oh, Fred, that's my job. And I said, oh, really? And he goes, uh, yeah, that's kind of, maybe we should have dinner after the show and make it back and explain how this works. So we did, and I told her, I said, well, I understand that and I respect that, but I said, you know, I'm responsible for the end product. I, it's my job to make sure the episode works. And so if you don't mind, what I would prefer when I'm directing is that I would I'll direct the talent uh, in terms of performance and in terms of blocking, but in terms of the dance thing, I mean, I can't dance. I mean, right. yeah, it's my wife. I cannot dance. <laughs> but um, but in terms of that, you, you, please take that over and handle that. But I need to handle everything else, not just handle the cameras. And so she very kindly did that. And I've, over the years, actually, we then evolved to where we were doing that. So it, it changed, and it was nice. What kind well, of a director was Fred, Gary? <laughs> Quit lie. <laughs> <laughs> he kept me on my toes all the time. He would come up with ideas. Can we try this? You know, not only on rehearsal, but on, on shoot days. So I love that aspect of it. I mean, when you've been doing it, you know, I've been doing it for 15 years at, at this point. I love the challenge, you know, because on a stage show, it's the same every night. You know, I might add a kick here or there, but for the show, the show's mostly the same. You have the same thing running. So the TV show, it was fun to be able to work with him and see where it goes, and especially on the videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did some fun videos <laughs> together. Land to make believe. Well, we, we yeah. talked about this, Nancy. Mr. Barnes, if you remember, mm -hmm. guess who created Mr. Barnes? So yep. you did that for Carrie. Oh, yeah, because, you know, he never got to be in front of the camera as Carrie. And so we had actually, we'd talked about that prior to that many times. And so this opportunity came along and he was game. So it and turned it, out really cool. Nancy, it's one of my favorite stories because it doesn't matter if it's Barney or if it's Mr. Barnes. Fred's got his, his he's telling his story. And so we're going through this. And we're seeing the land of make-believe yes, up there. Land oh, look, they look, and we're oh, seeing whoa, this. look, they're, oh, oh well, my gosh. This is on the, on the set at Universal Studios okay. in Florida. And it's the first scene. We're actually not only is it the first scene of the, of the video, but it's also the first scene we shot. Mm -hmm. And our executive producer, Randy Dalton, at the time, came onto the set and saw me as Mr. Barnes and said, "What? What is he still doing?" Is the mayor of Orlando was bringing the key to the city <gasps> for Barney? For Barney. And there's no Barney because Mr. <laughs> Barnes is there and his friend. <laughs> they all blamed it on me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you know, it's funny because we just talked about Universal and how yes. Barney is still doing that. Um, but apparently you had tourists around, yeah. too, that were watching you film. Yeah, the, the issue with filming at Universal in Florida is that it was uh, began as a theme park. And then they allowed some people to come in and produce shows in their theme park. It's different in, in Universal in L.A. It's totally different because Universal L.A., started as a production studio that then became a part par partially a theme park so in la when I, i've shot in la at universal in la many times and the thing they do there is that once you're ready to start filming they they run the trams somewhere else they keep people away from you that's not true at universal in, in, in no, florida it's not they're all around you all the time and i felt so bad for these guys because we the one of the good things one of the good things about that uh, studio is that they had like a, a a a road that ran around the park so we would get everybody in uh, golf carts and we'd drive around into insertion points and in those insertion points we they'd put us into the park we'd shoot a scene they'd pull us back out of the park and we'd go around to the next place but all the time that we were in that one spot there were kids and people around us all the time. So Carrie and all the poor dinos had to stay in costume. And well, it not was only in costume, but hot. can't break character. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, you can't break character. So you And they were kids everywhere and so he's trying to, you know, do his job and, and do this video while Hugging kids are running around. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Doing, pulling on your tail yeah, maybe. Yeah, poss <laughs> possibly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite uh, uh, moments we were shooting in the uh, Jurassic Park section of the studio <laughs> and uh, which was rather interesting. We're shooting dinos in a Jurassic Park se uh, set. Yeah, from the friendliest dinosaur <laughs> <laughs> to the less less friendly <laughs> the less dinosaur, friendly, yes. <laughs> but if you recall from I don't know if you ever saw the original oh, Jurassic yes. Park. Well, oh, you yes. remember the scene with the poor the poor guy sitting there and the dinosaur bites him. You know, mm -hmm. well I'm sitting there and Kerry comes over and he goes, oh, boy, he says I am really really hot and he said you know, and so we started visiting and while we're visiting, I of course as because it's so noisy, I would insert my head into the mouth, right? So enough that the, yeah, so hear. I could hear him and we could talk. <laughs> well, at, we had we carried on a conversation and then I turned and started and walking your head away. Is in the mouth. I'm inside the mouth. Okay. Yeah, but then I. Turn, you know, I said, okay, but let's get ready to start cheating not, again. I mean, not in a way that everyone could see, but <laughs> yeah. some people from an angle could see what we could see. What which we is, were trying to be as discreet as possible. Yeah, which is like, here's my head and here's the giant <laughs> mouth, right? So as I'm walking away from talking to Carrie, one of our production assistants, I see him laughing and I said, well, why are you laughing? And he goes, you realize that you're in Jurassic Park with your head in a dinosaur's <laughs> mouth. You have just traumatized an entire generation of children. <laughs> ah. Nowadays, somebody would have had that on video. I mean, they would have had that. Yeah, it's picture. a shame. I'd love to have the picture myself. Yeah, oh, the, my gosh. A couple of weeks ago, when we did the Q&A, and you asked me a question about what's the hardest thing I ever did, and I said, mm -hmm. performing in the sand, dancing in the sand. Oh, Discovery uh, Cove. Discovery yeah. Cove. That was Fred. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a Sea World, right? It's a Sea yeah, it's World. A branch of Sea World. It's actually right across in it in Orlando. It's right across from the Sea World Park. They have a place called Discovery Cove, and you can swim with the dolphins, which we did, and you can do all kinds well, Barney, of fun Barney stuff. Didn't swim. I was just going to say, yeah, I don't he remember would, hearing he about that. He wanted to, but we wouldn't let him. We would have sucked with the dolphins if that would have been. He would have traumatized. As the dolphins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we filmed at, uh, we actually filmed at three different parks to do Land of Make Believe. Yes. That's why it was one of the reasons why it was so much fun. We filmed at Universal Studios, and the Universal has a sister park called Islands of Adventure. And we filmed there, and then we also filmed at Discovery Cove. So we, it was just, and we did so many trips down there to plan it and everything. And our producers, uh, what we were talking about, you know, Carrie mentioned earlier about how we'd put a team together. Well, the team that I would work together, work with, is that I was the director, and then Brian Mack was my assistant director, and then um, Shelley Aubrey was my uh, performance director. Yeah, yeah, who y'all worked with? Yeah, yes. love Shelley. And then uh, Julie Hutchings was my producer. Well, when and, we did and that, Julie Hutchings' husband is Joe Phillips. Yeah. Who, who was, did the music? Who was here with us? Oh, oh, oh my God! It's like you <laughs> yeah. guys. That's that's we we keep we're telling you, it's a family. It's, it's definitely a family. Yeah, it's definitely a family. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we had this whole team together, and we, you know, we we would go and do all these fun things. But in planning the show, in planning that show, that video, because it was, they were spending more money than they'd ever spent on a video before. It was a huge project, and. Um, uh, so we did like three or four trips down to Orlando and we would go into Universal and of course Universal gave us free reign in the parks. We'd go ride the rides and we'd do all <laughs> stuff and then occasionally work in between. But you know, Joe Phillips came down with us and uh, we did, uh, I mean, and um, uh, Steve White came with us uh, to help write the script and mm -hmm. it was yeah. just, we yeah. had a great time. The hard part was though, as I recall, so when you had a scene in a specific place in, in one of the parks, you had to finish that like it was booked for that day so if we were in jurassic park we couldn't we, pick up we Shall couldn't we come back. coming back so yeah. you had to keep going until you finished it because we had to be done with jurassic park on that spirit yeah. it was all timed out scheduled out so that yeah. was the challenge of it if it was 100 degrees it didn't matter we had to push through well one of the good things that you know that i was very pleased about that you know linda houston who was our uh, uh, supervising producer and was great to work with and she recognized early on that it was it was very important for us to be very organized going in for those very reasons that carrie mentioned and so i went down uh, i think almost a week early and i worked with my my ad department uh, which i had a very large ad department because we were having tons of extras and doing all kinds you remember when we did the driving around in the car in the bus. Seen, yeah. in that bus yeah. yes 
And so we were doing all these huge numbers in a theme park. So I went down a week early and I literally went through uh, several times I went through the entire schedule with the AD department so they could stay ahead of us. So when we were shooting on one set, the AD department was prepping the next set. So all we would do is get in our golf carts, go around the park, be inserted into another part of the park, and the, and the AD department would have all the extras would be in place and know what they were supposed to do, all the, the vehicles, everything was there, and all we do is step in and shoot our scene and then pull out and go to the next one. It's funny because I've heard directors say, I don't want to work with kids and animals at the same time. <laughs> and yet you you did this for many, many years. Oh, yeah, Remember yeah. that with and, the, the birds? Oh, yeah. It kids and birds and oh, dinosaurs. I mean, and dogs. And, and you, know, <laughs> you name it, boy, I'll tell you. Yeah, and I came out of Wishbone, which we worked with, of course, uh, animals on Wishbone. But I'd also, I'd been doing children's programming almost from the very beginning of my career. And I would love kids. I love working with kids. Uh, they're just, they're so innocent and they, they don't have any artifices. They'll, they're, they are what they are. And they were just, oh, there I am talking to big guy. We're doing oh, a little, doing a little blue, blue screen shot, pretending we're flying in a balloon over the, over the earth. My and that's uh, Deborah, uh, Deborah Cole, who was one of my favorite kids. And uh, who's the boy? Can't tell. Oh. We will we will find him. Yeah, okay. We will find him. Yeah, he's making a face, so it's hard to tell. That's well, and, and this is Bob LaValle, right? Uh, Would have this been one of his balloons, one of his... Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I'll Bob's, tell you, the art department on Barney yeah. was hands down best art department I ever worked with. On this side, watching it and, and, and not being behind the scenes or, or being part of the production, you make it look so easy. I mean, it looks very simple on TV. I mean, it's just like, oh, here you are on a set. Yeah. But there's a lot of stuff that goes into well that. i always tell people that it took a lot of work to make it look that simple uh it was like it was like producing a musical a week i mean if you think about it you had uh yeah. we had musical numbers we had choreography we had dialogue that had to be learned you had um, uh, blocking that had to be learned you had these guys in these big dinosaur costumes <laughs> who could who could barely see the little tiny kids next to them and the kids are all dancing around them and every well, and week think we about it, out. you got voices in the other room. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, you have, it have was a sync between the two, you know, with and us. four cameras. We had three cameras moving around. We had a cam eight, which is a camera on a big arm that swings around, does in music video kinds of moves, and was run by a guy named Van, who was wonderful. And we had just the thing that, uh, in terms of the technical side of the thing, I think that saved us more than anything else is the producers very wisely hired. Um, camera guys that were shooting uh, sports and these guys were doing the Dallas Cowboys and the Texas Rangers and so because they were sports shooters they, they knew yeah, how to chase the did. action oh we had some great guys we had Lars and Bouvet and well, I think really Bouvet good. was oh, look here's oh, the camera yeah. right there is that yeah. one of the guys then huh there's Harold yeah Harold yeah. Harold yeah. <laughs> wonderful guy that's Harold Going, oh. Fred, what are you doing next? <laughs> and that, that's me running away his, before he catches me. Yeah. Like yeah, I saw He's, Harold do this look a lot. Oh, yeah. And that, and that look is, you want me to do what? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great picture. <laughs> well, what is, what is this Barney Camp? I know you've mentioned this before. What was yeah. Barney Camp? It, it was a way for the kids to uh, practice doing an episode before they actually had to go do an episode. Uh, we'd put the we'd actually bring on a script from an old episode so they would learn lines and we would teach them the blocking and we'd all those kinds of things and uh the very first day we and we did it just like we would do an episode so the first day we'd come in we'd do a table read and we'd teach them about how to interpret scripts and how to interpret dialogue and then we'd get out on the set and we'd start teaching them about kind of like you saw with me and Monsi, teaching mm -hmm. about where light, how to find their light, find their camera and how to play to your camera because you had three cameras in front of you and you never knew which camera was going to be your camera. So how to open out to your camera and those kind of things. And, and, the, one and of the, then the dance part of it for the, for the kids, because this is where it could get dangerous. If they didn't follow their choreography, because we're following our choreography. 
So if you go somewhere you're not supposed to, you could get run over from a dinosaur because yeah. we can't see them, especially with Barney. They could be under here. I can't see them. And if they went somewhere they weren't supposed to, so the very they were prepared on all of that. And they were actually able to get in this. We put them all in the costume yeah. so they could the get kids every got one in of the them. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, they could see what he was did, dealing so with. So see yeah. what we were dealing with and understand what we were dealing with and, the very and feel what it was like to get hit by a hit, you know, not hard, but <laughs> get a tail to, to yeah. get whacked by a We didn't tell you about all the kids we had buried in the back of the studio. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't talk about that. No, we don't talk about it. Can we erase about that, that part? Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, one of the very first things I told the kids when we went into Barney Cap, and of course I did it facetiously, but you know, I said, don't get killed. And, uh, and the reason I would tell them this is because you've got guys inside these costumes who are basically looking at the world through a mail slot. And you've got these little three foot tall kids next to them. There's no way for them to be able to tell where the kids are. And so when we would do blocking, one of the things that we would emphasize to them is that if, if I'm going to have you exit the caboose door and come down the steps, you need to go all the way to the bottom and finish your action. Don't ever stop because Carrie's going to be coming behind you. And at full if, speed. if you did full speed and if you stop, he will kill you. So all of course, <laughs> yeah. the kids are all like terrified. So they would stay away from him, but they never got hurt. We never, ever hurt a kid. But poor Carrie, I saw him take some dives that mom, I don't mom, know how he survived. Right <laughs> no. Mom, don't watch this one, Mom. <laughs> well, you got to understand, I, I, you've never seen inside that costume. No. It's got all this mechanics and is a communication system and a, kind of an air, a air conditioning. But it's got all this metal frame and things. And poor Carrie's like a BB in a barrel. He's bouncing around inside that thing every time I he like falls. That. I yeah. like that description. Oh, yeah. oh my and goodness. I felt so well, sorry and, for him. and you see how big that set was. Oh, yeah. And so a lot of times, you know, Fred would say, you know, I'd be at the caboose and I've got to end up to do that because Barney's got oh, small. Here we go. Yeah, there you yeah, go. That's, see how, see how big it is. is. Yeah. I'd have to be in a full sprint. To, well, he doesn't have air brakes. Yeah. He doesn't just stop. He's like a train. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So wow. when he goes, it goes. And then yeah. it's a, so they would need to know that if they darted in front of me or something. And the little dinos, too. I mean, BJ oh, yeah. be moving. Yeah. <laughs> But you got to know those kids pretty well then, didn't you? I loved I'll tell you, and that, again, like when I started in this business, one of the, one of the real blessings I had is I got to work with kids. And uh, even today, you know, a lot of the kids that we had that were on the show have gone on and done some pretty amazing things. Like, uh, in fact, I've made myself a cheat sheet. Well, obviously, okay. we know about Selena oh. and Demi. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that, you know, I, and they, they've done some really cool things. I'm really proud of them. But, you know, there's a lot of other kids that have done some great things, too. And if you don't mind, I'd like to Please. just mention uh, Justice Dion, who has, is on Hamilton, Hamilton on Broadway. That's huge. Very cool. Uh, when I knew her, her name was Erica Rhodes, but her name, name now is Daniel Coe, and she was nominated for an Emmy in 2015. She's a big, famous actor in Hollywood and uh, Emilio Mazur who was one of my favorite kids um, he wanted to be a director so yeah. he would shadow me he actually asked permission if he could when it wasn't his episode could he hang around and and ask me questions and watch what I did and so he did that on a couple episodes and he's become a big fan of this show he's contacted oh. me a couple times he loves hearing the stories well and he went on he worked for Henson he worked for Morgan Creek he's in LA and wow. he's going to be a famous director uh, Monsi Hernandez, who you've seen in the clips, she's done a bunch of things in, in TV. Madison Pettis uh, has done a bunch of TV shows. Uh, and then we've got some singers. Hannah Owens is a very popular singer. Lacey Cavalier is an up-and-coming singer in Nashville. Uh, Victoria Lennox. Remember Vicky? Yeah, I love course. Victoria. I to Victoria. And uh, Hannah's, Hannah's going to be on um, Purple Tales here soon. Uh, yeah. Okay. So and Vic talk to Victoria her. works for Variety in Hollywood. Oh, and my. Monet and Marie Chandler, who are doing acting and singing. And Karina Conte, who is one of our kids on Land of Make Believe, mm -hmm. is now doing modeling and acting. But I you know, I have to say that, I mean, I'm very proud of all those kids, but I am just as proud of the kids who who became uh, great moms and dads and nurses and doctors and school teachers, and we've got tons of those. Fred, that, um, that can't be, Fred, it can't be, pop. moms and dads, it can't be that. Oh. Old. We've got oh. kids, oh. kids old oh. enough oh. to be in Barney. It's shocking. It can't be possible. Oh. But Michaela Crawford, who, who works with senior, uh -huh. senior citizens, and Reese and Molly Wilson are doing great things. Kelly Achenholtz, Lexi Tanapel, uh, mm -hmm. Deborah Cole, uh, Marisa Kurz, who came on the show, you remember, you remember Hunter Bacunia. Hayden yeah. Tweedy, she's Hayden. in L.A. Yeah. 
Chase Gallatin and uh, who else am I missing? Oh, Zach so Sosa and Angel Velasca. All these kids have gone on and done really cool things, not necessarily in the entertainment mm -hmm. business, but they've turned out to be excellent human beings. And I think, you know, when I look back on my career, not just with Barney and Wishbone and all, but the, the thing I get the most gratification out of doing, being a part of this career is that, is that the kids that we've worked with actually moved on and did good things with their lives. And you've kept up with some. Oh, I'm right? friends with all those kids I just mentioned. So. And you, re you recently saw some of them? Was that oh, it? yeah. Yeah, See, actually, we that. have get-togethers once in a while. In fact, we had a little get-together. This is... I, I, I guess I should tell this. Oh, I, I love okay. it because it's uh, always like maybe or maybe not. <laughs> go. Okay. We, we 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 got together. We got a bunch of people. A bunch of the kids got together and they invited me to come. And we're sitting around. We're talking. They're, of course, they're all telling tall tales from their standpoint of what it was like to be a child on the show. And one of the kids goes, "Okay, I don't remember which one of the directors it was, but one of you directors used to say there was a guy named Luigi in the back who would come out and break our legs if we did something wrong. <laughs> and then which one was that? And I went. <laughs> yeah. I said, I was just kidding. And they go, you don't realize I was going home at night. And I was scared that Luigi was going to break my legs. <laughs> uh, but it worked. It worked. It got good performances out of it. <laughs> you mentioned one of the girls who was an Emmy winner. You too, Emmy winner. And then Barney was actually nominated for yeah, Emmys. And right? I was nominated twice for Barney. And then, and then for another show I, I directed was called In Search of the Heroes, which we... Um, well, I, I did for a number of years. I won a couple of Emmys for that. I did one, did a show on Anne Frank, um, and these were 30-minute dramas that were played in syndication. And I got to work with Meep Gies, who hid Anne Frank and her family. And when oh. they were captured by the Nazis, Meep found Anne's diary and hid it. And so when uh, Anne's father Otto came That's back, right. uh, Meep's the one who talked. Um, Otto into publishing the book otherwise you would have never heard of the diary of Anne Frank and I got to work with Meep and got to know wow. Meep and got to be good friends with her um, I got to um, uh, work with Charlie Duke who was on Apollo 16 and yeah and Charlie and I did one of those in search of the heroes together and um, just you know it was a really good show and another one and it was all designed for kids it was aimed at targeted at kids and so it was a fun show congratulations I mean, oh well thank I mean, you amazing. i appreciate that and nancy yeah. i'll tell you this gentleman is very generous with his time too i we used to meet all the time go to lunch i would talk about my projects that i was working on after barney and video and photography and he would always sit and listen and give advice and help and i know you've done that with a lot of people but he's always done that with me and very appreciative of well, that you're very kind what did well, and we had a wonderful Italian lunch, too. So. Yes, Wait, Italian lunch? <laughs> Fair yeah. play. So yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I feel like there's all this stuff left on the table between you two. Yeah. Well, those are stories we tell together. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Your, what is your favorite Carrie story besides him, you putting his your head in, you know, his costume? You know, there's, there's actually several. Uh, you guys were, I think when Shelly was on the show, she was talking about the one we did where Carrie jumped into the pool. And uh, I actually directed that show. And I was told by the producers that, you know, we weren't real sure how the costume was going to act when it, because it's like a giant sponge and they knew it would probably soak up the water, but you know, we needed to, and they said, so as soon as he, you know, it's okay to call cut, you need to really call cut. So I'm standing there, and Carrie and I had been talking about it. Yes. He had a little trampoline, and he gets, gets, gets back a little ways and comes running, and he hits the trampoline, jumps up, and as he lands in the water, I told him, I said, make sure you land on your bottom because I want the water to splash out of the pool. Well, he landed on his feet, which didn't make as big a splash, but then he realized, uh-oh, and I saw him plop down. And of course, then the water goes splashing out. Well, then as soon as he does, he just sinks like a rock. And everybody turns to me and looks at me, and I'm standing there going, well, that's lunch. <laughs> they did that several times to me, by the, by the way. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. Appreciate it. That. We'll see they you after lunch. They would play that trick on me. Um, I'll tell one real quick because it's in my head. Um, Karen Barnes did this one time. We, we were doing a video in Frisco, Texas, um, with a carousel, uh, uh, with a merry-go-round. Uh, no, a, a carousel, a Ferris wheel. Sorry, Ferris wheel. I'm scared of heights. 
I didn't know that. Most people don't know that for that reason. (laughs) So they got me in this thing, and I'm way up in the air, and they stop it. Lunch. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm to my wrangler, tell them to start this thing now. Because when I get down, (laughs) it's not going to go well. (laughs) Did you ever put the suit on? Oh, yeah. When I first came on the show, I insisted on putting the suit on because I wanted to know what kind of issues he was having to deal with. So I, I put it on and... I had um, I, I, I had actually worked with a there's a camera called a steady cam. Are you familiar with a steady cam? Well, describe that. It's a steady cam for those who don't know is actually a rig that that mounts on your shoulders on the operator's shoulders, and the camera then sits in front of him and it's gimbaled so that it floats and it allows a, a, cam- a camera operator to do really smooth running shots or all kinds of shots that you can't normally get. And so I had actually put one of those things on back in the past, and they said, you know, try running with it. So I tried running with it, and it's like a train. Once you get going, it's real hard to stop. Well, when I put on the costume, the Barney costume, I did the same thing. (laughs) I tried moving forward real fast to see what his issues were when he tried to stop. And that's when I started realizing one of the first things I needed to tell the kids is that very thing, that you have to understand that he can't start and stop on a dime, that you've got to stay out of his way. You're responsible to stay out of his way. But then it became a challenge because then the kids, what you don't want the kids is to look scared and you don't want them to be going, you know, be doing this at Barney the whole time, (laughs) you know. So you'd have to try to help them and block the action so that they could be close to him, but far enough away to when he did his 360, his tail didn't knock him down or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's tough. Yes. Oh, oh it's huge. I don't absolutely. know how the kids did it. I mean, I couldn't have done it at their age. And, and, yet, and you're in the suit and you don't really, I mean, how much did he know that what was going on around him? A I mean, lot. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that's we do rehearsals. Uh, okay. and well, I always tell people I have spidey senses. You know, I I use my ears and my eyes and everything. I mean, I really had to use those senses mm-hmm. for that. And what we also knew is as the, the dinosaur actors, we couldn't mess up a take because the kids are probably going to mess. They're kids. Yeah. So the worst thing that can happen is that one of the adults messes up a take and we got to do it again because they may go three or four takes they miss and we finally get a perfect one and then a dinosaur messes something up. So we really had to know our, our blockings and our rehearsals and talk about these things. Yeah. Because we the last thing we want to do is have Fred come over. Carrie. Oh. <laughs> one more time. One more time. It was perfect <laughs> until you messed up. Yeah. So. Do you remember maybe what a take that like over and over was there one thing that you remember having to do over and over and over and over well i do remember we did this really fun i guess it's probably close to the end of the series but we did this really fun open i loved i loved big expansive opening shots that would introduce you to the characters and to the park and we did this one episode where we had balloons and the kids would remember that and i wanted to do this (laughs) and they were doing this whole opening dance number with working with balloons and i was doing these these crane shots with it with the cameras craning around like mtv like music videos and it's doing all this very elaborate and the choreography and the blocking was very intricate and we shot that a few times. <laughs> <laughs> when he says a few. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah, quite and, a few. Until their legs fell off. Yeah. <laughs> those, little le- those little Barney yeah, legs, yeah, right? Yeah, little Barney legs. Uh, you, you know, Fred, you're, you were a success before Barney, obviously a success after Barney. You, you still are, are in the business. Mm-hmm. But what did Barney do? What did that those years as the director of Barney do to your to your your emotional state or intellect? <laughs> you I mean, mean other, all... other than giving me gray hair? There you yeah. go. <laughs> the first honest dance. Uh, you, know, okay. you know what I mean. Well, the the thing always I always tell people is that um, anyone can make a living, but not everyone gets the opportunity to make a difference. And for 14 years on Barney, I got the opportunity to make a difference. And, and and which started with the family on the set. It started with our kids. You know, we wanted those kids to be professionals and do a good job, but we wanted them to have a good time. And we wanted them, and it, it's worked out that way, that when they're adults, they're gonna look back and be pleased that they did it and be happy and have great memories. But then even beyond that, you know, Boy, how many how many ways do you get to make a living where millions of kids all over the world uh, grow up watching something you created? And that to me is just, you know, kids I'll never meet, I'll never know, 
but they they grew up on shows that I got to write and direct, and that's well, and cool. You would have gotten the opportunity to see some of the Make a Wishes too, right? Oh, I'll um, tell they you, they would bring them on the set, Make a Wishes on the set. That would that those were hard. Everybody would end up with tears in their eyes before it was over because you know there were great kids who loved Barney and many cases didn't have long to live, and it was it was very very difficult. But, but you noticed those kids were just happy. They were. We might have been having dealing with things, but the kids understood. There's my friend. Well, and the thing there's I'll Baby Bob, there's BJ, there's Barney. It would just be amazing to see these kids. I could see them you know, usually in wheelchairs. They'd be rolling them in, and they would get so excited. It's because <laughs> all because the crew. You know, usually we, this was done around lunchtime. Mm -hmm. People wanted to stay. Yeah, people and, wanted to see that and be part of that. And the funny one, the funny one that happened one time is that you know the kids had been watching Barney on television when he's like this big on right. TV. Oh. Well, we, they come out on the set and they're all excited, expecting him to come out <laughs> being this big. Well, he comes bounding out of the caboose and he's seven feet tall, weighs 300 pounds. And one time that happened and the little kid goes <gasps> and ran straight to their mother and wrapped her arms around mom. <laughs> Finally got well, relaxed. You realize when you see things like that, see you... As the actor, you know when to be big and when to be small. Oh, and so yeah. when you see that, you all of a sudden take the movements to smaller oh, and give yeah. them time to to ease up and move there. And, and we a had lot of times the cast kids would be there and they'd come to Barney. So if they saw the cast kids come to Barney, they then they would. knew it was. Safe. I didn't realize that you actually had the Make a Wish kids on the set. I mean, oh we yeah, a lot of times the they would do it. That's wonderful. Yeah, they would bring up, bring them in in a limo, drive them there. Aww. They'd get to have lunch with us and yeah. they'd give them a and, whole day. And we would, when they would come on the set, we would videotape them, so they got to go home with the videotape of their experience on Barney. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was wonderful, wonderful uh, charity. With we were well, very and it reminds proud. you what you're doing on these long, hard days and going, and you see that if that doesn't give you energy and make you go, yeah. And it was such a wonderful. family, such 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 a family. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So what are you doing now? Oh well, you know, I I did that Bollywood film as soon as Barney wrapped. Uh -huh. I directed a Bollywood film in India and. Uh, it was a real, real hoot. I music? got to work. Music? That was a whole big musical oh, thing, Yeah, too, a lot right? of dancing. Oh you know, God. Bollywood yes, films. Yes, yes, But I got to work with a guy named Prem Chopra, who had done 400 Bollywood films. I know that name. And then Divya Dutta, who had won their version of an Academy Award. And they were wonderful people. Had a great time doing that. And then um, came back uh, from that and, and did... Um, there's a guy that I've worked with for actually back back in the early part of my career back in the 70s uh, named Bruce Wilkinson who had a uh, ministry that I used to do a bunch of films for a Christian ministry and he had a new ministry that was in Africa in South Africa and so he asked me to come to South Africa and direct a bunch of those and so I ended up going to South Africa three times and traveled all the way from Botswana to Cape Town and all around uh, filming a bunch of animals and doing a bunch of really fun stuff. And then right now, I'm, uh, looks like I'm going to be writing and directing a, uh, uh, a feature film on a, new, a book series from Tyndall House called Winnie and the, book, uh, and the Horse Gentler. And uh, yeah, there's a series of eight books, and I've been asked to write and direct uh, a feature film on that. So we're working on that now and working well, on it. <laughs> what about writing and directing your books? Yeah, well, and I did, you're so sweet to bring that up. <laughs> uh, I have actually written a novel in, in my spare time. I wrote a novel called The Ugly Teapot. And, oh, there it is. And it's won a bunch of awards and it's done really well. It's a lovely story. Oh, and, it's the story of a young girl who goes on an amazing adventure with the father she adores. Um, but the, the difficult part is the father died a month before. And so the story is about how she comes to terms with the death of her father. But it's not that, it's not sad. It's actually very fun. The adventure is very fun and very exciting. And there's a lot of humor in it and everything else. But it has a really nice message for kids and how to deal with trauma and the loss of a mm. parent. Still dealing with kids. I still I mean, love still kids. Dealing with kids. Yeah. What age group is that for? It's 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 probably it, it what we call uh, uh, probably I uh, uh, can't think of the term right now, but it's uh, I would say probably eight to about twelve somewhere in that age range. Yeah, it's not for really young kids. Mm. Yeah. 
Would you do it again? The whole Barney thing. If oh, somebody yeah. came and said, "Okay, we're gonna got to put you back in the suit, and we got to put you back oh, in I the director's suit." I thought you were gonna say, "Work with me again." He oh, may say, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. I, I, I need would, a new Barney. I would yeah. work with. I'd work with Carrie any day, anytime. I was talking to Brian Mack, and Brian, and I, you know, have went through the trenches together in turning out episodes, and and I told him, I said, "It's really strange. It doesn't feel like ten years, and I feel like we could mm. put this team together." Tomorrow we could be yeah. shooting episodes, and I think we could. There's you something know, Fred, special about Fred, Barney. we talk about Barney Magic all the time. What does it mean to you? What does Barney Magic mean to you? It means a love of kids. It, it, you know, it, the magic is, you know, you think of magic as being something mysterious and untouchable, but this was very touchable, very tangible. You know, the the love you felt, not just among the family on the set, but the love you felt that from the letters and cards. I'm, I'm getting cards and letters now from kids <laughs> today awesome. from shows, and they know more about the show than I do. <laughs> and, you know, that is a very tangible expression of love. And so when you, when you say, what was the magic of Barney? The magic of Barney was unlike any other show ever created. It was a show about love for yeah. kids. So you'll go back and direct Barney. Will you come back and chat with us again? Oh yeah, sometime. Yeah, couldn't be back before tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so Nancy, we've got the. You know, we talk about each week. We have them have them sing, and yes. Fred brought us this really great clip that we have to oh. to, oh, sh to finish, yeah. to finish us out. Well, and this shows you. Okay, this shows you. This so this is us yeah. doing "I Love You" in yeah. rehearsal. Yeah. So oh my gosh, Carrie, that's you without a costume. With, yeah. That's right. The one so this time. This is a rehearsal. To, there it is. Oh my God! Look, and there's oh my. There's, there's every. Kyle. Yes. So this is a rehearsal. This is you. This is one hour. We've this never is shown hour. this before. This is something new. The exclusive. Exclusive. And the fact that Carrie is letting us see him on the set without his costume Very is cool. is because of you. Oh, right? that's sweet. <laughs> so should, that, should we just so show this? Should and we we'll bring this show out. this? Yes, we should. Okay, let's do that. Yes, please check this out so you can see Kyle making his moves here. <laughs> well, and, and, and see Carrie as Carrie. <gasps> oh. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, Fred, thank cool? you so much for bringing that. And of course, thank you to all of our. And watch, Carrie's oh, running away oh, wait, right now. Where's Carrie? Trying to hide. Yeah, watch, watch. Oh, wait, wait, there's more. Oh, he's gone. <gasps> Look what happened. So there's the, the And now the, what we're seeing on the screen is this, Carrie has become the then, Barney plush. This is the doll that we've yeah. had here before. And with oh god, s'mores. You're getting ready to cook s'mores. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Isn't that, fun? that that is fabulous. Yeah. Oh, I think that's going to make more people like us, subscribe, and share. That's right. Isn't that's that true? Right. So thank you. Thank you, Fred thank Holmes. You. Can so great, stencil? Fred. No, just, so it's a great. real joy to be here. Uh, just great to see you again, my friend. Thank you. So good to see you. And you're just glad I didn't make you sing and didn't make you sing. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. You don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me on that one. <laughs>